Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahabushai, Bahashum, Barakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashum, Yahabushai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there. Pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video. And I'm going to start it off in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And this is dealing with Yahabashai, the son of the Most High, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus, telling his disciples in the past of the end time signs to look for, to know that they were living in the last days. And as it says in Romans chapter 15, everything written aforetime was written for our learning. He was really speaking to his disciples today who truly are living in the last days. Hell, the last seconds of the last days at this point were the, this current age of the rulership of the heathen nations, chiefly by the biblical Edomites or the so-called white people as they're known as, is about to come to an end. And Yahweh is going to make his second coming to usher in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of Yasharala, the kingdom of Israel, were the true children of Israel, who are known as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, will be reigning in for the rest of eternity. But this is Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And that goes without saying right now. What? Wars in Ukraine, rumors of war with Taiwan, with Iran, with Hezbollah in Lebanon. World War Three, <laughs> nuclear war, etc., etc. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation. You know, race wars out here. And kingdom against kingdom. These major countries against each other. Which, you know, you can see these racial tensions boiling up especially in the United States of America and these major kingdoms, these major countries like the U.S., these European nations, Russia, China, the state of Israel, Iran, all getting geared up for World War III. And there shall be famines and pestilences such as what? The C-019, the avian sneeze. They're talking about the, a big surge in the dengue fever. <laughs> the list goes on and on and earthquakes in diverse places, which earthquakes are happening damn near daily all across the planet. Verse eight. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're just in the beginning of stages right now. It's going to get a hell of a lot worse from here on out. But in this video, I'll be dealing with the famines because famines of biblical proportions are coming where many people upon the face of the earth are going to die of starvation. This is a uh, second Esdras chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 18. The beginning of sorrows again, the beginning of sorrows and the beginning of great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Hey, if you're an Israelite, hey, pray that you are, uh, you know, that you are of that elect number and do whatever you can to please Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, to possibly be of that elect number so that you can have that protective hedge over you during Jacob's trouble. Verse 19, behold, famine again and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. And hey. The thing that happened from 2019 to 2021 was a light example of a scourge for amendment. You're hearing all these, uh, you're seeing these prices go up with inflation. You know, you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars. The Most High is clearly making it seen that he's about to bring great judgment. So what should you, should be, so what should you be doing as an Israelite? Amending your ways to try to please your power. But... For all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. For the majority of our people out there, what? They're concerned with forwarding this society. You know, they're all invested in a, the, the, the elections coming up. 
which, you know, I watched that presidential election with Trump and Biden, and those were just two clowns. Like, nothing about that was to be taken seriously. But you got a lot of our people and a lot of these heathens out here putting all their stake, thinking that, oh, if we just get the right person in office, hey, it's going to make America great again. But that's not the case. This current world or age is coming to an end. And if you don't want to get on board with the Heavenly Father, you're going to get on board with that judgment, that death, that destruction. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth, hey, which that is coming to an end due to inflation. They shall that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Sword, famine again. What are they say in baseball? Three strikes and you're out and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine four times the charm and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So if you're not of that elect number, if you escape, you know, the famines or the pestilences that are coming, hey, you're just going to get put to death by one of these other calamities by that sword getting killed in these racial skirmishes, getting killed in uh, civil unrest. Which, you know, there's going to be a second civil war in the United States of America and civil unrest in uh, a lot of these other countries across the planet. You're going to get drafted, which what we're seeing a lot of these different countries talking about reinstituting a draft. You're going to get drafted to go fight and die in the Middle East, Western Asia during World War Three. You're ultimately going to get burned up by one of those nuclear missiles that are going to be shot during World War Three. And the dead shall be cast out as dung shit crap in layman's terms and there shall be no man to comfort them for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down there's going to be so many dead bodies laying around you're going to become numb to it and just like you don't give a second thought to flushing that turd down the toilet you're not going to give a second thought about stepping over these dead bodies during the times of jacob's trouble which we're quickly coming into but I opened up the video with these verses heavily dealing with uh, famines to preface a clip from Lena Petrova's YouTube channel titled Warning, Prepare for Massive Food Wars, World Headed for Shortages, Warns Biggest Commodities Trader. And just to show that these prophecies are coming right on time, as it says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, Though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come, it will not tarry current events is catching up to biblical prophecy but this is a fair use copyright disclaimer i do not own any of the footage in this clip nor do i stand to gain from it monetarily it is simply for educational purposes and i'm gonna play the majority of this clip Hello everyone, thank you for joining. Henry Kissinger once said, control the food and you control the people. Control the energy and you control the continents. Control the money and you control the world. Now more and hey, you should look up a few quotes from that devil, that Edomite, that Amalekite Edomite Henry Kissinger, because he's given you a uh, uh, insight into the mindset of these Edomites that are currently ruling the planet, who what? have control of the food, the energy, and the money. As it says in Job chapter 9, verse 24, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. And as it says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, the devil, Esau, Edom, specifically these elites are coming down in great wrath because they know it that they have but a short time. A lot of these uh, food shortages that are coming, you know, while you do have weather events that are destroying farmers' croplands and stuff like that, a lot of these food shortages are being uh, engineered by the elites. What using what what do we what, what shall we call it? Uh, weather modification to d do things to the environment. You know, disrupting the supply chain. You know, a lot of these food processing plants are mysteriously burning down or getting hit by planes. And then what? The avian sneeze out here, killing a lot of cows and chickens and other animals. This devil, Esau Edom, is going to get you people by the balls. And as Henry Kissinger just said, control the food, control the people. When you've got, you know, engineered 
famines and food shortages out here, hey, these people are going to be desperate to take any solution to fill their bellies and the bellies of their loved ones. And what's that going to entail? You receiving the M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18 in your hand or in your forehead. And the M-A-R-K is, of course, that RFID slash NFC C-HIP implant. Remember, in uh, the book of Genesis, when uh, ancient Egypt had that major famine, what happened? The people sold everything, even themselves, into slavery under Pharaoh to, uh, you know, eat. And it's going to be no different with the modern day Pharaoh, Esau, Edom. More than ever before, the statement rings true. Due to increasing militarization and arguably a complete lack of uh, competent diplomacy, every day we hear about yet another escalation. And now that the Biden administration is likely going to approve sending U.S. military contractors to Ukraine officially, we know that they've been there for a while, but now that it's about to be official, it seems that we're on a straight path to a major, truly major global conflict. This is a good time for people to start waking up to the reality. In one way or another, escalations in the Middle East and in Europe will send shockwaves through the rest of the world. Human security will be impacted everywhere, and the supply of food will be at a great risk because exporters of commodities such as grains, oils, and other staples in our diet, they will likely move to increase their own reserves to make sure that they have enough for their own people, for their own population. This will further limit their exports, causing a surge in commodity prices worldwide. In turn, the poorest nations might face famine as they're unable to secure adequate imports of basic food items such as grains. Financial Times just published an article that underscores we can no longer rely on the supply of food being uninterrupted I realize that it sounds nearly impossible for many of us, and if this is not a red flag, I'm not sure what is. Take a look here. Financial Times says, World headed for food wars warns major commodities trader. It goes on to explain, the world is headed for food wars as geopolitical tensions and climate change push countries into conflict over waning supplies they're already telling you supplies of food are waning. And this is according to one of the world's largest agricultural commodity trader. Speaking at the Redburn Atlantic, and uh, should we be surprised at this point, none other than Rothschild Consumer Conference last <laughs> Rothschilds, a hey, one, of, one of those elites, along with the Rockefellers and these other major, you know, families and banking families of the Edomites that, you know, run the world. Like I said earlier, that devil that's coming down in great wrath because he know that he hath but a short time. Week, Varghese, who is the chief executive at Olam Agri, which is an agricultural trading house, he warned that trade barriers imposed by governments seeking to shore up domestic food stocks had exacerbated food inflation. What does he really mean by this? Well, he's telling us that countries around the world have been increasing their domestic supplies of food. And why would that be? Well, because all signs point to further escalations, an increase in refugee crisis, which means more vulnerable individuals around the world will be in need of assistance with basic necessities. And therefore, it means we will face further degradation of global stability. This has resulted in less inventory that is available for exports, and therefore food prices rose around the world. This is what happened, and it's only fair to expect that this trend will continue. And when you got less exports, what does that lead to? Emptier and emptier store shelves. This is a second Esdras chapter six. I'm gonna read verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You know, these grocery store shelves, whatever, whatever you want to call them, being found empty because of what? Disruptions to the supply chain. 
as Lena Petrova's just been going into, a lot of these uh, producers of grains and other food commodities are starting to uh, tighten their exports because they see that things are about to get bad, so they want to feed their own people. So these other countries that rely heavily on those exports, hey, their storehouses are going to be found empty as well as their bellies. Now, small farmers and agricultural businesses in general in the United States and in Europe really need to prepare for difficult times. Russia is the biggest producer of agricultural fertilizer, and up until this point, the United States and Europe have been purchasing billions of dollars worth of Russian fertilizer. However, even though Russia wants to continue exporting its fertilizer, wants to continue trading with Western partners, Western partners are about to make a big change. For example, in 2023, the United States purchased nearly $1.5 billion worth of fertilizer from Russia. However, that is about to stop, and that's going to become a massive hit to domestic food production in the United States and in Europe. Remember, at this point, nothing should be dismissed as a co- A domestic hit to, uh, you know, food production in the U.S. and Europe. Back to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. And what do you do with the cropland? You sow it with, with seed to grow food. <laughs> but now we're seeing there's a disruption coming to that. Coincidence. New sanctions will soon impact fertilizer imports. At a time when the EU is working on decoupling, so the EU and the United States are working on decoupling their economies from Russia. The figures are startling, says this article. Since the 2020-2021 agricultural season, EU imports of Russian fertilizer have doubled. Russia now accounts for around a third of the EU's total imports. France imports 80% of its fertilizer needs from Russia. Both the EU and the United States are trying to wage this blame game to justify their own lack of competence. You may recall that a couple of months ago, State Secretary Anthony Blinken and then Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen went to China, and while they were in China, they blamed China for being able to manufacture too much for its overcapacity a term that really doesn't exist. Well, now the desperate blame game continues and this time around, Russia is to blame because Europe wants to buy its fertilizer. As EU farmers' dependence on Russian fertilizers has grown, the state of our domestic fertilizer industry has suffered from the impact of cheap imports. Around 20% of EU fertilizer capacity is currently lying idle because of a lack of demand as cheaper Russian fertilizer has replaced fertilizers made in the EU. Russian exporters have priced their products in a very targeted way, so they're telling you that they're not really in favor of uh, market economy, so they're slightly but consistently cheaper than the EU's production costs. The European fertilizers industry calls on the EU to take the strongest possible action to stop Russia using fertilizer exports as a weapon. You just can't make that up. At the expense of farmers, and we all remember those massive, truly massive farmer protests against Agenda 2030 that took place several months ago. So at the expense of farmers, at the expense of their livelihoods, and ultimately, at the expense of food and therefore human security of many nations, the next move will kneecap food security globally. And make no mistake about these new sanctions, it is a choice. The initiative to stop importing fertilizer from Russia is ramping up. Here's Bloomberg, for example, a major news outlet telling you Europe's fertilizer producers sound alarm over big imports from Russia. A lobby group fertilizers Europe, and you have to wonder who's running this lobby group, right? 
It says that imports of Russian fertilizer undermine efforts to restart capacity that was idled by the energy crisis of their own creation, while also raising a food security risk for the continent. There is a lot to unpack here. Not only is Europe unable to function as it used to without cost-effective natural resources from Russia, but also they're trying to tell you here, they're trying to convince you that you now have to say no to food security because they want to revive their domestic production, which they neglected, the production of fertilizer. And of course, you can't do that. You can't revive manufacturing and industrial production without cheap energy. So, I say with that, hey, it sounds like those Europeans are in a catch-22. Domestic, you know, farmers are complaining because nobody wants to buy, you know, domestic food products or fertilizers because Russia selling it cheaper. But at the same time, Russia, I mean, Europe is staying afloat because they're relying on, on cheap Russian energy. Hey, and like Lena Petrova said, with these different uh, firms out here, it makes you wonder who's behind it. Like I was saying earlier in the video, the powers that be are helping to engineer a food crisis, you know, a food shortage to get these people desperate out here. And, and, one, and regardless of politics, once people's bellies start touching their backs, hey, it's gonna be dog eat dog out here. But that's it with that video. Let's go back to 2 Esdras chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 22 to 24. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And what would one be one of the major things to do that? Famines, food shortages, Remember what old, old Henry Kissinger said, you control the food, you control the people. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run. And hey, there's going to come a point to where, you know, critical infrastructure is going to be affected by, by cyber attacks or anything. So what the, what, the lights are going to turn off in certain places the water's going to stop running in certain places and that's just going to further expound upon all these other major issues that are going to be taking place but now i'm gonna close it out in second esdras chapter 15 i'm gonna start at verse 14 woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands and that one people against another goes into many things, race wars, nation against nation, you know, political wars, you know, one political party against another, liberal versus conservative, <laughs> civil wars, class wars with the rich versus the poor. And, and what? People fighting each other, friends fighting one against another like enemies because of food wars now, food shortages and swords in their hands especially in the United States of America, is going to be that gun. Verse 16, for there shall be sedition among men. And the definition for that word sedition means conduct or speech inciting rebellion against a ruling authority or monarch and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, these people in the government, like the, the mayor, the governor, the senators, uh, the president, the prime minister, as well as the authorities like the police or the military that uphold the system. And like I just said, politics are going to go out of the window when people's uh, when people are starving and they're seeing their loved ones starving. And when they continue to see their governments and agencies, uh, you know, implement policies that hurt their daily life, they're going to be like, look, this government's not doing it for us. We got to take actions into our own hands. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power <laughs> straight to the point. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. What does that sound like? A lockdown, a state of martial law, which can be instituted due to a whole host of issues. Another major plague out here, you know, a state of war, civil war, you know, food shortages causing, you know, these cities to be in an uproar in a neat 
which would necessitate a need to bring in, you know, uh, security forces to lock it down. The list goes on and on. <laughs> the possibilities are endless for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, with the gun, with a knife, a bat, a literal sword, Molotov cocktail, anything people are going to have their hands on and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And suddenly shall the full storehouses be found empty and for great tribulation, people getting it how they live out here. Friends fighting one against another like enemies, kicking in doors, taking food, and hey, taking ass as well. <laughs> and you can, uh, you know, take that any way you want to take it. But uh, that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. As we can clearly see, we are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say, Abad Babol, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.